Welcome to Channel AMEC, your insight to the Australian visa system. Good day everyone, my name is Carl Young, your online YouTube visa consultant. Are you interested about migrate to Australia? Why don't you consider to subscribe to my channel and turn on a little bell on the side so once we have all the updated news, you'll be the first one of getting all the insights. Now in this video, I would like to take a little bit of explanation, the detail of what skill assessment is all about. Now obviously you have been onto my channel and you have listened to me many many times under the skill migration program where skill assessment is the first vital thing that you require to accomplish. If you don't have a skill assessment, you cannot even enter into skill migration or perhaps the employment skill working visa as well. But what is skill assessment? Why is it required? I think this video I would like to take a little bit of depth and put some explanation and some examples to actually show every one of you to understand what skill assessment is all about. Now first thing I would like to take everyone to see uh, what the actual uh, immigration website actually is saying. So uh, you probably can actually Google and find this uh, website pretty a web page pretty easily. All you need to do is type in home affairs space skills assessments. Now it will take you to this page. Now this page doesn't say much. That's why I'm here to actually explain a little bit further more of what it's all about. So skill assessment is what it says overview are issued by relevant skill assessing authority. So what are the skill assessing authority? These are basically the bodies uh, that uh, the immigration recognize in order to assess a particular occupation and skills. Uh, we got to face it, immigration cannot uh, hire all these experts and assessing everybody because there are thousands of different of occupation out there. So they require, they put it onto uh, uh, the um, specialty bodies that's embedded and recognized by under the law uh, of immigration of Australia to actually assess them. So a skills assessing authority is an organization that checks uh, that your skill meet the standard uh, they set to work in the relevant occupation. That's basically explain uh, tells what, what I just told. Uh, the combined list of eligible skill occupations set out all relevant occupation under four occupation lists. Again, that there are a lot, hundreds and thousands. Uh, most occupation in each list will have their own skill assessing authority, and, and there are a couple of big ones. Uh, and I'll take you into uh, detail there. Uh, we can only accept skill assessment issued by these uh, the assessing authority. So you cannot just find somebody. Uh, perhaps you're in uh, your IT expert. You cannot just find somebody of your senior um, manager to actually assess your skill and given that report to immigration. Now that will be deemed invalid. It has to be an authority recognized by the law of Australia. Okay. It is a respons responsibility to contact relevant skill assessing authority. Uh, let me move that over a bit. Okay, you can actually see that. Um, and obtain the skill assess assessment if required. Each assessing authority has its own assessment procedures, time frame, and changes. So bear in mind, if you do really wish to actually go into skill migration, you have to plan ahead. You cannot just say, I got a ticket, I'm flying tomorrow, let's do it today. No one's going to give you any assessment for one, in one day. So some take two weeks, some takes two months, and some do take longer. They have more procedures. For example, uh, architects, sometimes they take quite long. Uh, and also um, some of the experts uh, in like medicines, uh, it, it take quite a while. And some offshore skill like cookery and chefs, uh, they do take a while. They need to interview you and they need to take a lot of step in assessing overseas skill as well. So it does take time. So you need to really need to plan ahead. Uh, obtaining a suitable skill assessment is mandatory. Here we go. It's mandatory. That's why it's the most important and the first step into a skill migration program in Australia. So it's mandatory for some 
well, let's have a look. What are these some subclasses? And maybe requesting others. Let's let's have a look in the visa. Here we go. That's general skill migration. There's an employment sponsor. There's a temporary skill shortage and and the and temporary graduate visa. So that covers every single skill migration program. So that's what we have been um, promoting and telling everybody that uh, you cannot just. Uh, estimate how many points you may or may not have uh, under EOI if you haven't even done your skill assessment because everything will be deemed invalid okay now let's get into a little bit of my depth uh, let me go into the actual law here okay so this I'm taking an example of subclass 1A9 which is the most preferred uh, visa category because it, it gets you um, it's independent it doesn't require state nomination and it gets you into a permanent residency straight away that's why it, that's the most preferred however it's the most competitive uh, category of visa where it requires a very very high EOI score now where can we find skill assessment here it's actually under the definition of skilled occupation so let me click on that and we, that would take us to skill occupation with its has has a meaning given at by regulation 1.15 i with well, us gonna be i or l that's getting there okay anyway i think that's i okay now this is the actual regulations and regulation basically spells out what skill occupation is about so uh 1.15 i sub um reg one a skill occupation is a relation to person, meaning an occupation of a kind that it is specified. Again, that's why it is specified under the law by the minister, minister of what? Minister of Immigration for sure, in an instrument in writing. I'm going to click on that and show you later. And if number of points specified, uh, specified in this instrument are being available, of which number of points available, and that is a, a applicable for a person according to specific of that occupation. Now, basically, that's saying that whatever the occupation that you're in you should be assessed by a certain skill assessing authority not not because you're a cook and you go into accountancy that not, that's not gonna work now let me click on that instrument in writing now that pops out a bit more detail um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pick the most current one I believe that will be that one there okay now that's the actual law piece of law you may have come across this uh, in my previous video I'm not gonna go into detail of that but what I'm gonna go is uh, showing you uh, what's in here so the law actually spell spells every single occupation out uh, so it will be a huge list huge list of occupation going from top to bottom and at the right hand side will show the actual skill assessing authority as you can see that there now the best way to do that is obviously you go to uh, you, you go to Google and you search skill occupation and there is a web page which the um, immigration has prepared and done for you to actually search on your occupation with a specific skill author uh, assessing authority on the side you can actually access to it so having a certificate doesn't mean you have a skill assessment again that's still going back to the question mark from the beginning of this video we we have now learned what skill assessment is all about but if i have graduated in a certain occupational discipline does that mean i have a skill assessment now the direct answer to this is a no now the it's probably a no-brainer for a lot of people but I do still get people to ask around and come in here and say uh, look I've got this RPL certificates um, can I lodge the visa now I said have you done your skill assessment oh they don't even know about it. They, they thought that is equal value to skill assessment so that is directly an answer of no so let's have a look what it is I'm taking some example to you guys so first thing is that um, you might be familiar with trade recognition Australia so there are a lot of programs out there as you can see let me move to the left side so you get, they, there's job ready TSS offshore migration skills so what I have done is I have ticked uh, the guideline of migration skill assessment it gets to the guideline here now um, what what you when you click on the actual link it will actually take you to this um, 
PDF file, which is bulky. It has 17 pages uh, and it's really boring to read through. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do finder and then I type in RPL. Now, th the reason I type in RPL is uh, there seem to be a lot of confusions uh, of what RPL would recognize uh, prior learning actually gives you a certificate. Now, a lot of people will, uh, will misunderstood and they thought that the certificate equal value to skill assessment. No, that is not. That basically the certificate will only show that the assessing authority had agree that your skill and background is deemed to be at the standard of what Australia, uh, whatever occupation they're in, will actually recognize okay but it's not skill assessment yet you may have the skill but you may not have uh, the positive skill assessment now i'm gonna explain a little bit more here so as you can see what this one talks about the total employment period you're required to demonstrate is required to have as you can see down here probably three years full time now you may have been awarded with the prior learning uh, recognition meaning that you uh, your qualification background your knowledge is actually uh, recognized as a standard of what the Australian has been taught but whether or not you have that skill it's a different question mark because some occupation does require a, a post graduation work experiences just like what we've seen here so you may get uh, a strong qualification issued by an RPL However, you can you still require to have the employment. So you need to get qualification and you need to get employment requirements. So that, that's what the reason why I need to sh I wanted to show this page to a lot of people because they really do confuse there. So you having a qualification, that's the RPO or whatever the certificate you get, does that mean you get skill assessment? So if you if you um, understand this more in depth, um, if you come to Australia and study abroad uh, with a commercial cookery certificate four in commercial cookery, now uh, the day that you graduate with that certificate four, uh, you are not deemed to be chef yet. Uh, you are required to actually go through a lot of practice and uh, working hours and get the um, whatever the employer to actually sign off your work hours uh, for t particular hours then you actually pass and get into the next stage of getting your skill assessment done so if you have been following what the job ready program you probably will know what i meant now let me take you to another example here now this is um engineer australia now again a lot of people thought um once i graduate i get skill assessment that's not it and a lot of people also thought that if they go here um, this is another another page of the um, Engineer Australia. Now you can join Engineer Australia as long as you have studied engineer, and you can become a member. You can be a student engineer. You can become a member of graduate engineer. You can become a member of professional engineer, and you can become all these type of different um, uh, a member of engineer. They got all these different type of engineers. Now becoming a member does not mean you have a skill assessment as well and that's why they have separate page for particularly for migration skill assessment and that's again um this this question has been asked so many times uh, and that's why you they still have this red button here apply for migration skill assessment even if you're a top senior engineer and have been done so many um, big projects now that doesn't mean you have a skill assessment okay you need to get all these uh, assessed so how are you gonna get yourself assessed oh, that I've got a separate video I've done before you probably want to have a good little bit of search on engineer Australia skill assessment I have done a video on that one there so that's another example another one is um, CPA Australia can you actually see that then that's the I hated that they every uh, web page has different <laughs> configurations so i need to adjust the windows all the time anyway you see that now on the, on the top left corner cpa australia that's the skill assessing authority for uh, all the accountants and also you can actually become a member of cpa now becoming a member of cpa does not mean or you becoming a cpa let's get into that page become a cpa 
Now that doesn't mean that you have a skill assessment as well. That's for professional body. We all understand it could be a reference for your migration purpose, but that is not skill assessment. As I, we have uh, come across at the first page there about the law. Um, you need to still get a skill assessment. That's why we have this page and skill assessment require you have that English proficiency and you need to apply it and you there's some frequent asked question. I'm pretty sure that some people ask the same question down here. Now the last but not the least that's going to ACS Australian Computer Society. I did have people come to me and say look I'm a member of ACS uh, let's lodge my visa. I was recognized whatever the profession in ICT, let's do it. I said, no, you cannot do it. Did you have you got your skill assessment done? As she said, what is that all about? Now, skill assessment obviously is, as you saw at the first page, it's mandatory for general skill migration. Have you got that done? I'm a member of ACS. No, that's not a skill assessment. Again, if you want to become a member, you can get all these certification to become a member, but the reason why I'm showing here is you always see that separate page for migration skill assessment. The reason why it's up there because it's actually mandatory for all the skill migrants. If you want to uh, migrate to Australia through a skill migration program, skill assessment is again mandatory for everybody to get it done. So again, just summarize what we have just talked about. First thing first, skill assessment is um, defined and written in the law of immigration in Australia. So it's you, ha you have to get it done. It's mandatory for all the skill uh, migration programs. Now, having a certificate qualification, bachelor, master, RPL, whatever that is, that does not equate skill assessment. Becoming a member of engineer body. Uh, whatever the doctor body, dentist, uh, become a, a member of um, accountant, CPA, charter accountant. You can be a, a very, very good accountant, but again, you are still required to go through skill assessment in order to actually lodge your EOI and your visa. Anyhow, should you have more question, query, more than welcome to leave a comment right down below. And I see you in the next video. Goodbye.